Coming up next in the slam is Ryan McClellan. So growing up, I went to more shows in a week than most Hot Topic punks have seen in lifetimes of weekend mohawks and manic panic die jobs. It felt good back then to smash empty 40s and give the finger with friends, not because it was the hip thing to do, but because it was a way of life. Nothing mattered back then as long as something obnoxious was on stage, as long as we got that chance to swing hands, pump fists, and sing along like a crowd of electrified punk rock monks. When I was 13, I saw Dwayne Peters of the U.S. Bombs smash a cymbal with his forehead in perfect time to the rhythm that rattled the walls of the Elvis room down in Portsmouth. More shit-faced than anyone I'd ever seen, he wore old Ray-Bans with only one lens, P-U-N-K, scrawled across the front in whiteout, plaid dog pile bondage pants with zippers that shone on the legs like the pins that held together the old blazer he wore. He stopped to the beat in his checkerboard creepers like he was having a seizure, slouched over the mic, growled and snarled in the front row while he belted out lines like, I ain't going to work today because I'd rather work on breaking my own bones with some style, you know? Though I never squatted in a shithole or panhandled for change like an old gutter punk, man, that place became a sanctuary. Through bruiser shows, kicked in the face by a 300-pound skinhead, to anti-heroes gigs after American History X used their logo without permission, I just stuffed my nostrils with paper towels, went back into the pit, and dominated it! Stood in the center with my arms folded while everybody else stood still, bought my fuck Hollywood t-shirt and wore it proudly to school even though I knew I'd get into trouble. We smoked pot behind the club with the Ducky Boys, ate sushi with Al Barr of Dropkick Murphy's fame, and I almost joined those infamous New Hampshire drunk punks, but I got sick of all the rules they imposed! Posed. If there was no show at the Elvis, we'd just load up Mike's 88 Subaru and head to whatever show rolled into town. Wherever the wasted youth crew would assemble for the festival of fuck shit up, Mike always drove us, always nervous, like some sort of mad sea captain having wicked coughing fits and puking for no reason, but he was our ride. So despite the scares along the way, we always made it on time because we'd driven that route so many times it was etched into our minds over the Tobin and into our element. Lost and happy in that city of legends like the Shod, Slapshot, Bostones, and the Freeze. We were free to drink with arms around each other's shoulders, smoke butts like old school hooligans, walk yawky way passing flasks, or stand under the purple awnings of the Middle East. Faking it or living it, I'll never know or care. But just so it's clear, I know who Keith Morris is, the Ramones rule all, and I have clash records on original vinyl. So don't tell me I jumped the bandwagon because I wasn't around in 77. Don't tell me my lifestyle's dead because I don't fit into a niche. You'll get nothing but the fuck you mantra of a mindset that lives despite any claim that it's dying or dead. And even if it did, memories always transcend death. 